Hello, Rebels of the Sharp Illusion. Normally, I start off this podcast by saying hi, but I'm going to start this one off by saying hydration. We know how important hydration is for our bodies. It's the thing that keeps us running, right? You want to be a well-oiled machine. You want to be running efficiently. You know what can help you run efficiently? Liquid IV. It is the category-winning hydration brand fueling your well-being and their hydration multiplier is the one product that you are missing in your daily routine. It comes in a little stick that's a powder and in just one stick you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. If you use it first thing in the morning maybe before a workout when you feel run down maybe after a long night out and doing a little party you know what I mean and what if you have like a long flight or something like that and you just right we all feel that way so add this to your water and that convenient packaging can go with you anywhere you go, even if you're going to the gym or you're traveling or you're at work and maybe you didn't have a great breakfast. At least it's something that will fuel you up in the morning. And there's a whole bunch of flavors that are available like sea berry, strawberry lemonade, concord grape, lemon lime, pina colada, tropical punch, watermelon, strawberry, passion fruit, guava, acai berry. Did I say that right? I never know how to say that. But Those are just some of the flavors. Here's some statistics for you folks. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and even vitamin C. And we all know how important those B vitamins are. It's got three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. It's made with premium ingredients. It's non-GMO and it is free from gluten, dairy, and soy. I'm going to offer you a great deal, Rebels. If you go to liquidiv.com and use offer code SHERPA, you can get 20% off of anything that you order on that site when you're shopping for some better hydration. So that's Liquid IV. Check it out at liquidiv.com. podcast that you're listening to is being presented to you in cooperation with the SJ Network. If you're a person who'd like to appear on a podcast, contact Stephen Joyner at s-j-network.com. Let's get on with the show. Today on Too Many Podcasts. Mike Kanichi, the host of the YouTube show, In the Spotlight, drops by for an interview. And we're also presenting Sherpa Samples. But after this show is over, let's remember one important thing. There are three types of people in the world, those who can count and those who can't. Welcome to Too Many Podcasts, the podcast about podcasts. Now, podcasting from the Sherpa Chalet on Mount Podcastia, he's your host, Jim, the Podcast Sherpa. Hey there, Rebels of the Sherpa Lucian. Welcome to Too Many Podcasts. It is the podcast about podcasts and so much more. Jim, the Podcast Sherpa, sitting right here in Sherpa Lou Studios, which is connected to the Sherpa Chalet, which is high on downtown Mount Podcastia. We are overlooking this big sea of podcasts that are out there, and I'm here to help you navigate your way through it. How do you like that? Ooh, that was a smooth intro. Thank you very much. I'll take my check, please. Okay, Lord, Mr. Bruce, it's been a while, but now you can ask me the question. Who's our guest today, Sherpa? His name is Mike Kenichi. He is the host of a YouTube show called In the Spotlight. And, of course, it is an interview show where he gets to talk to people from all walks of life. And I got to talk to him this time around. And we got to know him. And he's a super nice guy. And you should check out his YouTube channel and... I'm sure there are going to be some people on that program that you will definitely want to hear whom he's interviewed. So while you're listening to that, I realized that earlier uh, Mike is from Connecticut, which they call the nutmeg state. Now, I have never needed nutmeg a day in my life. Now, I'm going to do a little research and look into this nutmeg thing, but I'm going to leave the interview to play for you guys And maybe after that, it'll buy me a little more time, because right after that, we will be listening to some Sherpa samples. So let's get things started with my interview with Mike Kenichi of In the Spotlight, and I'm going to go look for some nutmeg. Hello there, Rebels. Welcome to Too Many Podcasts, and today's interview, we are talking with Mike Kenichi, and he is the host of the YouTube show In the Spotlight. He is joining us, and... 
well, it's an audio podcast, so he's not in the spotlight, but you will hear his voice echoing from beyond, and he's here to join us now. We're going to get to know him a little bit. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate you having me on today. I really uh, feel honored to be on, so thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you would like to come on the show, because you know some people just go running in panic, just going, no, no, not too many podcasts, <laughs> anything but that. It's nice to... Uh, it's nice to actually be interviewed and I get a break from interviewing people. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> you get to be on the quote unquote other side of the mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, on the answer part anyway. Yeah. Hey, I like it. No problem at all. So how, how did you get started with all this? What what uh, captured your interest? Well, about seven years ago, I did a local podcast just in my uh, town and mm-hmm. I live in uh, Derby, Connecticut. And I started doing a show by the name of Hometown Heroes. And basically what I would do is I'd have former athletes, former uh, teachers, things like that. And you kind of like pay tribute to them and, you know, what they've done and impacted the town. But what happened was when COVID hit in 2020, I had to go a year without a show. And then finally, the lady who ran Comcast, uh, you know, Comcast Studios, she told me about how I could do stuff virtually. And once I started doing shows virtually, I said, you know what? Because Hometown Heroes used to just be a monthly show. I said, I want to do a weekly show too. So I started in the spotlight. And then, you know, the first big guest I got was Don Most from Happy Days. Mm -hmm. Uh, He played Ralph Mouth. Sure. Then after that, I just said to myself, you know, you got to take advantage of this uh, tool that you're able to use. You could get so many more guests than I just, you know, Little by little, started getting more and more guests. I mean, I've had from John Capelos to uh, Jeremy London, Keith Coogan, um, Carol uh, Potter, you know, just a bunch of people on my show. And it's really just been a labor of love. It really has been. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because uh, I guess people always wonder about that. They're like, well, how do you end up getting celebrities on your show if you're not really one who's in that in that media circle? You know, and, you know, I mean, fortunately, you and I have uh, publicist extraordinaire Steve Joyner to uh, help us out in that department. But even like if we do it independently, all you're doing is basically asking. They're either going to say yes or they're going to say no. It's, you know, we don't go after them and, you know, stand outside their and door. Sometimes they, don't, sometimes they don't even answer you. So that's, that's right. Yeah. You know, well, what's you their get names up? at the end of the episode? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, it will be the show that calls him out. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, tough at times. I mean, people think it's easy. Like I'll, I'll see friends and they'll be like, oh, my God, you get all these guests. And, and I do. But at the same time, I've either gotten turned down quite a bit or people just don't respond. So you really appreciate the people that do respond because you know how hard it is to get people to commit to doing your show. That's that's absolutely right. Uh, a while back, I interviewed a, a director, and her name is Lana Reed, and uh, she was telling me that she had posted a picture of her dog on Twitter, and the actor Vincent D'Onofrio commented on it and said, "Well, what a cute dog!" And she was like, "I'm not even friends with this guy on Twitter," and he's, you know, so she said, "So I figured, well, he's either going to say yes or no." So. She said, I asked him, would you like to come on my podcast? And he said, sure. And she said it was one of her favorite episodes. She said, anyone who was an aspiring actor, they were like given like a free master (laughs) class by Vincent (laughs) D'Onofrio. It's like, how lucky could you be with that? It's funny how um, little things like that could work out um, where you just, you know, and that's the other thing, too. I would... uh, you know, you add certain people on Facebook that you've been fans with, you know, fans of forever. Mm-hmm. You don't ever think they're going to like something you post or something. So I saw a couple people and that's how I got down most or started getting in touch with him because he liked something one day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, maybe I should try to get him on. But that's the thing, too. You never know who's really paying attention. So that's when you really have to like you got to be willing to take the chance and you got to be willing to get rejected too, because Mm -hmm. as much as you want to succeed at this, you fail a lot at this and people don't realize that. (laughs) That's true. We try to keep our batting average up, but you know, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, A while back uh, there was an, I was going to do like a music podcast 
And uh, I found the email to contact one of the 80s artists that I really enjoyed. And uh, I, I tell the story a lot. And uh, I wrote, you know, do you think that this person would be interested in coming on my show? And this person was living in Berlin. So all I got was an em- email that said, hi, Jim, he would not be interested. That was it. <laughs> that was the entire email. It was like, well, he's living in Berlin. Why didn't he just say nine? Or you get the one where, uh, you know, in order for you to get so-and-so on, uh, we insist on $5,000, you know. <laughs> so basically, that's their way of telling you. He doesn't really want to come on. But if you want him on that bad, you're going to have to pay that much. <laughs> so you do get those. I mean, that's the thing, too. Like, um, I, I, I don't know how you feel about it. But I feel so much more comfortable when I communicate with the actual person than the person that you have to go between to get to them. Because I feel like when you talk to them and you tell them about their show, you get a good response from them and they seem receptive. Where if you like contact their agent or whatever, or their publicist, whoever you're contacting, half the time they don't think it's a good fit for them. So they don't even bother to tell them, you know. Yeah, it, it's probably because usually like the the agent or the rep, they've probably heard so many different, uh, you know, presentations from people where they're just like, it, it, it just probably becomes almost like a reflex where they just say, no, nope, it's not going to work, you know, or or maybe even, you know, the you never know if the celebrity just says, if anybody uses this word, <laughs> I don't want to be on their podcast. <laughs> so they're like a guard dog, you know. <laughs> See, the one thing you realize is that um, you really have to understand you're going to be frustrated at times. But at the same time, you can't get frustrated because, you, you know, you just got to move on. If you can't get this person, you just got to go to the next person and see what they say. And believe me, it, it feels good sometimes when you get in touch with somebody and you don't hear from them for two months and then they, they finally respond. So at least, you know that they weren't ignoring you. They just hadn't got to it yet. Right. Yeah. The, the, the acknowledgement is always a big plus that at least, you know, yeah. even if they just say, Hey, I, you know, I can't do it. Okay, cool. You know that, you know, and, and that's just the end of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with that sometimes now too, with a lot of scheduling, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like, right. like another guest this week. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the tough thing. And sometimes I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll do multiple interviews in a week because it helps if you have trouble getting a guest you could use that week right. that you taped guests. So, I mean, that's why, like, you you always got to take advantage. Like, I think uh, this week alone, I've done four interviews because mm-hmm. this was the availability of people. So I had to do four of them. So, you know, the other thing is, too, you get confused. You're like, okay, what time am I going? Am I having him? I got to try to remember it, look back at my uh, notes. So it could be hectic, but it, it really is rewarding when you do get guests on. They, you've tried really hard to get. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you that, uh, I don't know, if you use Zoom, uh, that, you know, you're out and all of a sudden you see... You know, John Smith has joined your Zoom meeting. Like, no, no, I'm not even in my computer. Well, see, I actually use, um, I'm sure you've heard of it. I use StreamYard. Have you heard of StreamYard? Mm -hmm. So StreamYard, the way it works is if you sign off of StreamYard, you have to go and do another link. They don't save it for you. So you literally have to send it to your guests about 10 minutes before you go on. Right. And then the waiting room and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't run into that problem. However, today I'll give you a good example. Now, a guy emailed me about having, you know, one of his people on my show, but it went in my spam. So I never got it. Mm -hmm. And he said, can you check your spam? He goes, because people are uh, telling me that they've been getting my emails in spam. So sure enough, he sent it to me on Monday. I never saw it because it was in spam. So now I know enough where I got to check spam. Now, the good thing is we're going to do the interview tomorrow instead, but I mean, that's the other thing you you have to worry about, too, is are your emails going to you or are they going in your spam? Because who really checks spam a lot? <laughs> I, I've been starting to write people. I sent you two in, invites. One of them will probably end up in spam. Yeah, <laughs> most of the it's time frustrating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing how it just goes in spam because you know what it is. They don't recognize it, so they just think it's junk mail. Maybe that should be like the next title of my podcast. This podcast is not spam. (laughs) 
hey, you know, you get you get a good amount of people listening to that, believe it or not. <laughs> and I'm sure people are like, when is he going to start eating it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, I mean, with all the frustrations and, and pleasures that come with doing this show, who have been some of your favorite people on your show so far? Well, I'll tell you right now, Don Most, obviously, was a highlight. Another guy I really enjoyed was Al Sepienza. He played Mikey Palmisi on The Sopranos. OK. Um, and what I loved about him was he just seemed like an average guy you're talking to, not somebody that thought he was bigger than anybody. Like literally we were having a conversation. And then when we got off the air after we talked for another hour, just not even on the air, we were just talking. But the one thing that was very gratifying about that interview is I think a half hour into it, whatever question I asked him, he said to me, he goes, I've d-, he goes, I've never done an interview and I've done a million interviews. I've never done an interview where someone was so well prepared. I am really impressed. So when you hear something like that, that makes that makes all the people that decline going on your show, it, it, you know, it's nothing against you. You know, you're doing a good job because that's validation right there. And that I mean, that was a great feeling to hear. So I really loved that one when I, you know, had him on. He was awesome. I love John Capelos was great. Carol Potter. She played uh, Cindy Walsh on Beverly Hills 90210. She was the mother. OK. And she was phenomenal. I mean, and then I had a. Most recently, and she was a fun guest, Deborah Jensen. She was on Solid Gold, and she was in the movie Staying Alive with John Travolta and them. I mean, that's the thing, too, is that you learn what they all had to do to get in the business, how they got their foot in the door, and how hard it is. That's And um, another guy I really enjoyed, um, if you remember NYP Blue, uh, the character Metaboy. I had Gordon Clapp on, and you know, not realizing just how into theater Gordon is as much as he's an actor, Mm -hmm. he loves doing theater. So that's the best part about it is you find out new things about them all the time. Yeah. You know, it is interesting, especially with like with actors that like people may not know them by name, you know, immediately, but you know, they hear their stories and, and like you said, they, get to show your audience that, you know, hey, it wasn't easy. I didn't just walk on the set and they gave me a role. And you yeah. know, these are people who, you know, the, the term of overnight success is just, you know, just a myth, really. And that's the thing, Jim, is when me and you get turned down by guests, the actors kind of go through the same thing because they get turned down a lot for projects, for roles. But mm-hmm. when they get those roles, you know, like in um, Al's case, he got The Sopranos, which changed his whole life. For me and you, when we get a a guest that, like, you know, we really tried to get and we get that person on, Mm -hmm. it changes us. I mean, you just feel so good. You know, I don't really think about it much and I don't really like to go back and watch my interviews. I don't know how you feel, but, you know, I just don't. I'm like, okay, why did I say that or whatever? But I do say to myself sometimes, wow, can't believe I had this many guests on already. Like, you don't even realize it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, it goes quicker than you think when, you know, you've you've got so much in your collection that you can actually look back on. Yeah, I mean, you're going on two years now that I've been doing this in the spotlight show. And I mean, the countless guests I've had. And I mean, the good thing is, is that what you see from a lot of people who are in this business, Hollywood and stuff, mm-hmm. that they did not forget that they struggled to get there. And they appreciate what the fans appreciate about them. So that makes it even more satisfying because yeah, there's going to be people that turn you down. There's going to be people that ignore you, but the ones who respond to you, you know that they get what you're going through because they went through it. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, yeah. it's, it's throwing us a crumb, but Hey, it's a crumb. We'll take glad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you have any dream guests that you want to have on your show, Mike? Oh yeah. I mean, um, you know, I would like to get, one of the main characters from Beverly Hills 90210, because I grew up like I was a high school kid in the 90s. So I watched that show. Okay. And I'd really like to get either Jenny Garth or Jason Priestley. Uh, Luke Perry would have been a dream. Unfortunately, he passed away, you know, suddenly. And that was very sad. Um, One guy I know I'll never get because he's just not in the best health. But Michael J. Fox would have been a dream for me. He was he is my favorite actor. Mm -hmm. Loved him in Family Ties, Back to the Future, Spin City. And just everything that he's went through in his life and to never like 
you know, complain or feel sorry about himself. He's definitely somebody that I would love to have on as well. That's a pretty cool list you got there. (laughs) Yeah. And I've had some sports guys on too. You know, I was thinking about it today. They've been talking about how the Mets are going to retire Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden's numbers. I had Dwight Gooden on twice in one year. So, I mean, that's not easy to do. And, you know, I'm a big Yankees fan, but, and he pitched a little bit with the Yankees, but I'm a big sports fan. So having Dwight Gooden on, and I also have, I don't know how familiar you are with sports radio, but my dream guest that I had in studio, never mind on Zoom, in studio with me was Chris Mad Dog Russo. I don't know if you've heard of him. WSAN, right? Yeah, he was with Mike and the Mad Dog. And uh-huh. I mean, he, you know, he used to always do that open and ah, like that. Welcome to Mike. And he, he did it for me. Ah, your host is Mike Kenichi. It was a dream, you know, it was great. <laughs> so that was, you know, if I never had another guest that was big and I just had him, I still would be satisfied because that was a once in a lifetime thing. When you do your show, I mean, like, you really want to like make these people available to the public and kind of show you know, their, their backstories and anything like that. Were, were there any particular guests that had like a story that kind of threw you a little bit like, like, wow, this really is something that you went through that, you know, maybe like all of a sudden your interview became a little something else. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, who was it that I had on um, kind of was, oh, well, Stan uh, Livingston, he played uh, Chip Douglas on My mm-hmm. Three Sons. Sure. You know, just like what he had to go through to get, you know, he got my three sons, but then after my three sons ended, he went through some tough times trying to get jobs. And, you know, he got turned down by this person for a theater project that he really wanted. And you just realize that these guys, we look at them and we say they're actors and they're going to work forever. And he was on a show for 12 years. And when it ended, he, he had to start all over again. And it wasn't easy to get work. So, you know, when you hear those stories, you realize too, that you know, success doesn't last forever. Like you have to keep working at it. You know, having steady work doesn't last forever. Unless like, you know, you really have to be in films or you have to be like somebody like Tim Allen or, uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, somebody like that who just always has like people knocking on your door. But this was a guy who played, you know, on a show where he was one of the sons. So he was like a child actor. And he had to really start from scratch again. And he did okay. I mean, he bounced back. But he went like a few years where he just, he, you know, he had to guest star on shows. It wasn't easy to find work. Yeah. I, I think sometimes, you know, like you, you said, uh, you know, that some of them, they hope that people are always going to be knocking on their doors and looking for them. And, and I guess part of their uh, role in this, pardon the pun, is, you know, they want to kind of, I don't know, maybe in a sense, reinvent themselves. You know, they don't yeah. want to be like the one that trick pony, character. you know? Yeah. Well, you know, um, if you remember Ken Osmond, he played Eddie Haskell right. on Leave it to Beaver. He had to get out of the acting business for a while because when Leave it to Beaver ended, he kept getting typocast because they just looked at him as Eddie Haskell. So right. he ended up becoming a police officer. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. But he became a police officer in L.A. for many years because he said that people just all they could see was Eddie Haskell. And he wanted to play different parts. He didn't want to just be Eddie Haskell, you know, and that could be good and bad. I mean, he he played a character that to this day, if you see somebody sucking up. They refer to that person as Eddie Haskell. But at the same time, it cost him a lot of like work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's probably even rougher when, you know, when you are that much younger too, when you, you think about like uh, Jaleel White who played Urkel, you know, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be 45 years old and people are going to be like, do the Urkel voice. And he's going to be like, shut up. <laughs> well, you know, it's <laughs> funny it. too. The funny thing is, is uh, we love the Ur- Urkel character. We did. Mm-hmm. Right. Not that he doesn't love it, But there's part of him. I've, you know, listened to different interviews. He's and he's another guy I like to have on, too. He's been very frustrated over the years because people couldn't look past him as anything but Urkel. Right. But as he got older, I think he embraced it again because I I saw him, you know, uh, play the role again on like the Scooby-Doo cartoons. He voiced Urkel Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, I mean, listen. You have to like take the good and bad. The good is for him is he played an iconic character that he, you know, everybody knows who Urkel is. And that everybody 
loved that nerd when he was a kid. I mean, they thought he was the greatest thing in the world. They had Urkel Dows. Mm -hmm. He was, you want to talk about any TV show, Full House, Step by Step. They always had the Urkel guest star on there because they knew that it was a good way to like get people to watch the show. So, I mean, that's the good part of it. The bad part of it is, is that when that show ended, he had trouble finding work. Yeah, you, you get trapped. You know, the, yeah. the thing that brought you to the dance is the thing that kept, keeps you stuck in the dance. <laughs> yeah, it really is true. Where, like, um, you know, I can think of other guys. I mean, look at uh, James B. Uh, Seekin, or Seekin. He played Howard Hunter on Hill Street Blues, you know, he was a lieutenant. Mm-hmm. And then when that ended, he was able to bounce back. He got a nice part on Doogie Hauser as the father. He played the father on Doogie Hauser. So sometimes you can do it if your character's not completely over the top, where like, you know, Henry Winkler's character, it was tough because nobody could look at him past Fonzie. Same right. thing with Urkel. But like, if you play more of a supporting role, you have a better opportunity to find more work. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is our tip to everybody who's coming on the show. <laughs> Be a little flexible. <laughs> yeah, Don't lock exactly. yourself into that one role. Right. But when you think about it, you know, I'm, I'm, it's funny when you're been talking about that, I'm thinking about like the actors who played like in, in the Star Wars movies, like uh, Darth Vader and Chewbacca. We never really knew what they looked like. So yeah. <laughs> they were just so guys in costumes. So they could do whatever they wanted to. Yeah. And you know what? Like I said, I mean... See, here's the thing. Like I told you, there's good and bad. Because if you can be uh, known as this one character for your whole life, that means you did well at it. Because mm-hmm. if people could remember it, then you know you did great. Like uh, Telly Savalas, he's always going to be known as Kojak. But the thing of it is, too, that if you play in movies like that, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, stuff like that, you can make three or four of those movies, and that could set you for life. I mean... The rituals alone will, you know, keep you, you know, with a nice lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So there's pros and cons. I mean, if you want to keep working, I get it. But you could do roles. like I mean, look at Jim. How many movies has he really made in the last 20 years? Not a lot. He doesn't have to. He has made a ton of money by what he's done in the, you know, dozen projects he's done over the years. Now, I mean, I I know you're you're very busy with your show and, you know, you have you're looking at getting guests. <laughs> uh, what, what are some of the podcasts that you like checking out or or watching uh, when, you, when you're not working on your own? Well, there's a guy by the name of Steve Cooper. Um, I enjoy his podcast. He has a ton of guests on and he does a tremendous job. He's based in Philadelphia and I really enjoy his. I started watching yours recently and I mean, I get a kick out of yours because, you know, one thing about you that the difference between me and you is you're very funny and you know, you, you know how to like kind of relax the guests, which is good to do. So I enjoy watching yours. Thank you. Um, yeah. I also, um, what's the other one I really like a lot. Um, I watch, um, I don't know if you remember the monster squad movie. It was a movie in 1987 and it's really had a cult following. And I will watch that podcast from two of the characters, uh, the actors who played parts in that movie, Andre Gower and Ryan Lambert, they played uh, Rudy and Sean. And I really enjoy that. It just talks about, you know, all Monster Squad stuff, stuff like that. But I really try to watch as many podcasts as I can, Jim, because it's always nice to see how they do an interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you could always learn. And that's what I think people sometimes forget is when you think you know everything, you don't really know everything. It's very yeah. true. And you and you have to give yourself that time to learn it. You know, I mean, right. I, I'll bet you probably did the same thing when I when I did. You kind of had like a vision of how it was going to go for your first episode. This was even before your first guest came on. And you're like, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And then, yeah. you know, and then after like a couple of episodes, you kind of checking out and saying, you know, we need to tweak this. We need to tweak that. And then that show just kind of it really kind of takes its own life. You know, it takes a life of its own. Yeah. Well, the thing of it is, is there's going to be things that you're going to keep the same on your show, but there's things you want to try to do as different as well. And one of the things I try to do that I don't, you know, not everybody will do. Now, I'll give you a good example. I'm going to have the guy who played Furio from The Sopranos, uh, Federico. I how I got to make sure I know how to say his last name because I'm going to have him. <laughs> have <a> plus. <laughs> but the point I make is, 
you know, when you have somebody like that, a lot of times they just want to go right into the Sopranos. I don't do that. I want to go into how you be, you got into acting. What were some of the first roles you really enjoyed doing? Then what are you doing? You know, you talk about Sopranos, but you don't want to make that just the focal point of the sh- the interview. That's what I believe is you want to talk about everything they've done because I don't think I think some of them get tired of talking about the same role that, all the time. You know, <laughs> oh, which yeah. I think you, which you can relate to because you know you've done enough interviews. You know that you can't just always ask them about that one role they did for, forever. <laughs> well, I, I probably said this story a couple of times, but I'll, when we're ra- when we wrap up this interview, I'm going to tell you a story of one actor who was just so tired of getting asked this one question, and I didn't ask him that, so I was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we've got this portion of the show, and it is called Shameless Self Promotion. This is where you can let everybody know how they can follow you and uh, see what's going on with your show. Shameless Self Promotion. Yeah. So basically, all my shows go right to YouTube and. My YouTube page is called In the Spotlight, Mike Kanichi. That's C-A-N-N-I-C-I. And you can see all my episodes there. They're all posted. And that's my biggest thing is I need more subscribers. So I hope that people will subscribe because that only makes the channel better. But And if you have any questions, you could always um, contact me. You know, you could send me a message from YouTube. You could email me at niche76 at AOL.com. That's N double e c h 76 at aol.com and i'd be happy to answer them but uh just go to that youtube page because that has everything on there there you have it mr mike Kenichi from in the spotlight on that old youtube thing that i heard is quite popular now <laughs> yeah it really is <laughs> thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show mike well thank you jim i really enjoyed it and uh, i think you do a great job and i look forward to having you on my show eventually so Stay tuned for that. Now it's time for Sherpa Samples. If you've got a podcast you'd like us to sample, contact us, and we'll mention your name on the show. And it's Sherpa Samples time, and that's when me, Jim the Podcast Sherpa, goes exploring through the podcast charts and sample some episodes just to let you know what they're all about. It's not necessarily to review them, but just to give you an idea of something that you may or may not want to check out. So we usually do about 10 at a time, and that's what I got for you this week. Some interesting ones, and we start off with some of the educational stuff. First off, the History of English podcast, and the episode that I listened to had to do with the rhythm of the English language, why there are certain emphasis put on certain syllables of words and how it's melodic and how it ties in with poetry and Shakespeare and so on and so forth. The second one uh, is Skeptoid, and that's with Brian Denning, and that's about is scientific and psychological explanations of various phenomena that we see in the world. Uh, The episode that I listened to is something called The Third Man. Uh, It had to do with when a person is in extreme danger and they actually believe that there's another person there that's helping them and what manifests that. So heavy stuff, heavy stuff. And third in that category is Making Sense with Sam Harris. Sam Harris is a neuroscientist. He is a philosopher and a best-selling author. And a lot of those episodes do have to do with mindfulness. I know he's actually created an app having to do with mindfulness and philosophy and a lot of other very heady stuff. So if you like your subjects to be really deep and metaphysical, uh, these are three podcasts that you might want to check out to make yourself sound a little bit smarter. Does it make me sound smarter? No, 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 not at all. People I Mostly Admire is hosted by Steve Levitt, and Steve Levitt is the other author of... Freakonomics. And you know what a fan I am of Stephen Dubner and Freakonomics. And this is basically Mr. Levitt's interviews with people that mostly admires. He was speaking with a person who worked for Google and X, I mean Twitter, about using technology for mental health. My brain may explode after doing all this heavy thinking. Uh, Handsome is a comedy podcast, and that's featuring comedians Tig Notaro, Fortune Femster, and May Martin. And uh, I think the humor in this one gets a little bit crude. So, uh, I mean, if you're a fan of these women, I'm sure you're used to some crude humor. Uh, They basically take 
questions from their friends and answer them. And along the way, they're having all sorts of crazy discussions. I don't even want to discuss what they were discussing on the episode that I listened to. I'll just put it to you that way. Tales from the Stinky Dragon is presented by a podcast network called Rooster Teeth. And I noticed that a lot of their podcasts actually have to do with a lot of role-playing games and uh, anime and uh, cartoons and stuff like that. And that's what this one was about. It was uh, a role-playing game where each of the folks in the show had a specific role. The House of R is an episode about nerd culture. And the episode that I was listening to had to do with Ahsoka, and it's two women discussing it. It's actually brought to you by the Ringer Network, who usually do a lot of sports, but I guess they get into movies and uh, nerd stuff too. It was about two hours long. That's a long conversation to have about Ahsoka. <laughs> but if you like it, they it's, it's there for you. I'm sure these people have some really interesting commentary. I have no idea about the story, so I really can't give you a fair judgment with that. The last two were... Uh, Ones that I really enjoyed probably out of the batch. Uh, bombing with Eric Andre. That's when people come onto the show and talk about times that they bombed. You know, there will be a lot of comedians, but other times there may be people who bomb at other things too. If you don't know who Eric Andre is, he's a very funny comedian. Uh, if you listen to the Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend podcast, a while back Eric Andre did an interview with Conan and he was really funny. I really enjoyed it. And uh, he's very funny on this podcast too. And you know, I've always had my issues with comedians doing podcasts that they're not feeding off a live audience. But uh, this guy's just talking and he's being very naturally funny. So props to Eric Andre. Well done, sir. And lastly, uh, there has been a podcast series called Over My Dead Body, which presents a lot of different true crime stories. Uh, this one is called Gone Hunting. And it had to do with a gentleman who, when he was duck hunting, was found murdered. It goes into the story of how he could have possibly gotten murdered and the story behind it. I, I must say that uh, any podcasts that are brought to you by Wondery is usually pretty good quality stuff, so you can't really go wrong with them. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So there you have it. Ten podcasts to check out. And now we will dive into one outro to get you on out of here. Be a rebel. Follow the show at Share Pollution on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. A very special thanks to Mike Kenichi of In The Spotlight. And be sure to check out his YouTube channel. And you know what? If you're not subscribed to this channel, why not? You know, all you have to do is hit that little subscribe button that's on top of your podcast player app. Or if you're listening on our YouTube channel, which is at SharpLution5000, you can do that. Also, this way you'll never miss a new episode whenever it comes out. And I'll always be here for you every week. I'm kind of like a, I don't know like a really well-behaved newspaper boy. I, I, I don't know. I can't think of anything like that. Uh, you can also follow this show on social media at Sherpolution on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I know I keep calling it Twitter. It's X. X. <laughs> and as I said earlier, you can also check us out on our YouTube channel, Sherpolution 5000. It's called Sherpolution. And all the fave shows will be there for you to check out. So we will be here next week, of course. I don't know with what, but we will be here. I promise you. And if you've got an iPhone or an Android phone, maybe if you like, download the AMP app and you can listen to my latest radio show. It is called Too Many 80 Songs. Of course, it's called Too Many 80 Songs. And it's me live playing all 80s, uh, taking requests and dedications and all sorts of wonderful stuff. And maybe we'll even do some theme nights as well. I've got some followers. I'm getting this thing off the ground, but I am inviting you to come on and listen and I'll be playing your favorite songs. You just gotta tell me what they are, okay? So in the meantime, I guess Lord Mr. Bruce and I will be moving on out of here, getting the next show ready. And until then, I wish you all Viva la Nutmeg. Uh, I mean, Viva la Revolution. Okay, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Too Many Podcasts. Please disperse. You can go home now. I said you can go home now. Viva la Revolution. Viva la Chapelition. <coughs> oh. Yo, come back now, you hear?
You know, Rebels, if you've been checking out some of my promotional ads on social media, you will be aware that I have been using a lot of AI programs to help me create ads. But you know what? There's a lot more uses for AI than just funny little videos. And I'd like to introduce one of our new sponsors, Podium. It is a leader in creating AI tools for podcasters. Now, let's say you've got a podcast and maybe you're even thinking of doing a podcast. You're probably wondering, well, how can AI be integrated with your workflow? I'll tell you about Podium. As a podcaster, you know that writing show notes and creating chapters and transcribing episodes takes a lot of time and it can cost you a lot of money too. But you know what? That's where Podium comes in. It's an AI tool designed specifically for creators and podcasters with the goal of making post-production tasks quick and easy. And in just a few minutes, Podium generates show notes, chapters, summaries, clips for social media, a full transcript, suggested episode titles, social media posts, and more. Whew, that's a lot of work for one little program. Your show notes are key to your podcast success because it helps new listeners find your podcast and they'll know if it's a fit for them. You know, it's kind of like too many podcasts. It also improves your SEO. That's your search engine optimization. Ooh, big phrase there. And overall accessibility. And with Podium, you can focus on creating a great podcast and let Podium's AI do the heavy lifting. But Podium isn't just for solo creators and podcasters. It's a game changer for editors, producers, marketers, agencies, and production studios. Teams that use Podiums are able to increase workloads, decrease turnaround times, and improve their quality. How does it work? Very easy. First, go to Podium's website, and you'll see that link that's right there in the show notes. You get three hours free just to try it. Pretty cool, huh? And using that link also supports this show as well. And you know what else happens? Because I'm a good guy. You use my link, you will get 50% off for your first month. So visit the site, upload an MP3 file, and download your files, and that's it. And if you need anything else, you can use Podium GPT to generate articles and any marketing copy you might need in seconds instant show notes transcripts chapters for your podcast or channel this will level up that podcast so check out podium today nothing who cares 